Welcome to Essential Lightroom. Digital photographers, once they've been out in the field to make some images, have two primary needs. They need some way of moving those files from their camera into the computer and subsequently organizing them. And secondly, they need a tool to convert the raw files into something that can be shared through digital media or print or books or slideshows. Adobe Lightroom 5 does all of these things and more. And we're going to use that throughout these videos to demonstrate all the different things that you can do with it. The two modules that we're going to focus on primarily are the library and the develop module. The library is very much the organization and import area and the develop is exactly what it says. It's your, it's your digital darkroom. So without any further ado, we're going to dive straight into the library section to give you an overview of the workspace and what the, the type of things that you can actually do here. This is our thumbnail view. You can obviously click on an individual image and this is your uh, full screen view. So you can dodge in back in between those. We have two sidebars, both of which are hidden. Uh, I'm doing that just to, to save real estate in, on this video recording. The right hand sidebar is very much an information in terms of histogram, quick development, keywording and metadata. And the left side bar is your catalog. This is where your images are, uh, folders, and then obviously any collections that you may have created and some sharing options that you have also. The first thing I want to look at here before we dive into the library properly is to look at the import interface. Once we have decided on a source, so in this case, my SD card from my Nikon D800e, we are going to specify that all of these images are on the card. Now we can choose to check them all or uncheck them all and we can make a decision whether to just import the whole lot and you know sort them out later or we can do a pre uh, check here and basically by double clicking on an image you can decide whether you want to include it in the import or not include it in the, in, on the import. And this is a good way of getting rid of the ones and if you just scroll back and forward, I'm happy with that. Uh, that's pretty dark, so I'm not going to leave that one there. That one's okay. Include in the import. And just by scrolling through, and then I'm not going to include that one. And then when you go back to thumbnail view, you end up just with the ones that you want to import. Now you have an opportunity here to keyword them in situ. Now all of these were from the same location, so it's not a problem for me to write for example, a Cineboin or Sunrise or Foggy because all three of those keywords actually correspond to all of these images. Once you get to a situation where you have images from different locations or different situations, then it's not really appropriate to keyword them all at the same time. Metadata is your copyright information, your name, address, your email, your contact information, and that is the perfect place to, to give that, uh, to, to embed that into the files. The final thing I'm going to cover here is where you're going to put them. I'm going to import these particular files into a folder called Canada 2014. I'm doing that because I organize all my images by folders based on their location. The final thing is this copy is DNG. If you're shooting one of the popular brands, this is less uh, of an issue. There are some camera manufacturers who have ceased to trade uh, in the last 15 years or so, and the digital file formats may not be supported by future um, versions of Adobe Lightroom. You can convert it into the DNG format, which is the digital negative format, which has been pioneered by Adobe and they're basically saying that they will always support DNG files in everything they do in the future. Uh, at the moment, I simply copy my raw files onto the camera. Um, if you choose to go with a DNG file, that's entirely up to you. It's not a massive problem either way. Once you have imported the files, as I said, you end up with your number of folders. So here I have a Canada 2014 folder and there are currently 1,244 images in it. I was there for six weeks. Now, the, the library module allows you to do a number of things. And if we open up this sidebar here, 
if I look at this particular image and you, we can see it's already been key, keyworded autumn, blue, fallen leaves, trees, waterfalls and yoho. If I want to search for images that have been tagged river, then this is going to bring up all the images that were tagged with the word river. If I want to go in and search for four star images, I can go through and search for four star images. And how you tag these images is basically when I'm going through them, I just press the numerical key and that basically is tagging each of these images with an arbitrary one to five or whatever it is that you want to do um, and say, right, you know, I'm going to tag these with whatever number I want. Your own tagging preferences are entirely up to you. Some people uh, tag their images for utility. Other people use a rating system because that's the ones they want to work first. Uh, it's until you know a five might be images that are going into your portfolio so depending on how you want to rate your images then you know you can use the star system you can right click on an image and set a flag so you can basically because you can search by flagged images you can search by color so if it's a green image that might be one that you say right uh, you know this is one I want to process a red might be something that you feel you might not want to work or it's something that uh, you know maybe it's going to get deleted at the end of the day you have flagging rating and colors as a way of rating your images you also have the opportunity to search by metadata which will show you the date so the year um, the camera that was used, the lenses that were used. So if I want to look at images that were just made with the 70 to 300 in this scenario, then there they are. If I want to see images that were made with a 2470, there they are. Um, again, there's no shortage of ways for you to search through your image files. We have text, metadata, and the, the rating system, or you can turn it all off and just see all your images and put in those little corners and we no longer have to see any of it at all. The last thing I want to cover in the library section is collections. Collections are loco located over here in the left, uh, the left sidebar. And what they basically are, are virtual folders where images are placed or previews of images are placed and you can work on those images and they are not moved from their original location. So there are two types of collections there are regular collections which are collections that you make yourself typically i make them if it's a panel or if it's an exposure blend or it's a, a focus stack these are the typically the types of things that i will use and i'm putting them there because i can find them easily when you've got database of tens of thousands of images it can be difficult to find a couple of images that you want to focus stack so this is the easiest way for me to find them um, regular collections are straightforward and smart collections are by definition smart. Lightroom comes with a number of uh, pre-installed smart collections, one of which is images that you've taken in the past month. The next is recently modified, which shows the images that you have been working on most recently. And finally, you have images without keywords. So what it's telling you is that you've been very bad and you haven't keyworded your collection and you need to get on with it. So let's move swiftly on from there. Um, if you go to create a smart collection, you can create a smart collection using any criteria whatsoever. For example, if I want to say that I am using a certain focal length, so let's say 20 millimeters, and I can call this collection the 20 mm, I now have images that are all taken at 20 millimeters. It's, it's a pretty great way of uh, hammering down your collection and finding very, very specific things. If you, you know, in particular, if you're looking for, uh, you know, things that are say 300 millimeters, you can change that and instantly you get taken into a, a different, a different search, which is basically most of these for me are birds, but there's a few landscapes in there too. 
smart collections are definitely a way to uh, narrow things down and find the images that you want or work on them without uh, without getting confused as I said they're just virtual copies you're not moving the images into another folder these are virtual folders and that is pretty much all we need to say about collections